Uh, is it Mueller? Or... It's me. I'm recording. Oh, hey, it's Are you Molly? Are you also like letting people in the room? Yep, I will be in charge of that. And welcome everyone to Balkan Circle. Today, my co-host is going to be presenting, so I will be the kind of sole host, but he will probably still co-host anyway with me. So, um, Kirill Abramov needs no introduction, but I'm going to introduce him anyway. <laughs> um, he is currently an assistant professor in the Department of Slavic and Eurasian Studies here at UT Austin. He's also a non-resident fellow in the uh, as part of the Intelligence Studies Project, which, if people know, is so connected to the LBJ School here at UT Austin. In a former life, he was the acting vice rector for international relations and research at New Bulgarian University in Sofia, where he had a career there as a political scientist before we were lucky enough to bring him here to UT Austin. He's also studied and taught various places, University of Sofia in Bulgaria, Central European University in Hungary and elsewhere, or sorry, studied there in addition to New Bulgarian University, but he did teach in the Department of Political Science at the University of Sofia until 2005. And he was from 2006 to 2010 was the director of the International Consultancy and Research Institute um, political capital it's called in Bulgaria. So there's many other things he's done, but um, which I won't go into, but I just want to hand it off to Kirill and we will see some of his uh, recent work today. Thank, thank you, you so much, much. Kirill. <laughs> thank you very much, Mary. Uh, again, uh, I would like to thank everyone uh, for coming uh, this afternoon, this evening uh, on both sides of the pond and probably um, from other locations as well. It's a bit humbling. Uh, don't let the heavy biography fool you. It's me. <laughs> uh, and what I would like today to invite you uh, is to show you some ongoing work, uh, which is connected to uh, hopefully a chapter that will be published next year under the title of Imitation, Specialization and Attempts at Innovation. Uh, Bulgarian state security's approach to covert action. Um, and um, this is a subsection of it uh, where I will try to uh, revisit um, the classified um, archival material, uh, which is stored uh, with the commission or so-called Komdos in Sofia. Uh, that is to reveal the uh, identities and uh, belonging to the uh, apparatus of the former state security. But instead of the wonderful work which has already have been done, although I would argue that today this is um, a bit of an understudied niche uh, from academic perspective, wonderful work done by investigative journalist Christo Christov, uh, who has published a number of works uh, that concern uh, the murder of uh, Georgi Markov, the Bulgarian umbrella. And he is one of the sole reasons for why this trash of documents actually with one of the cases that I'll be talking about today was a, we were able actually to um, uh, preserve it, have it, uh, and uh, make, make it accessible uh, in a digitalized version. Now, uh, of course, I'm opening a bit of weeds because the digitalized archives, as we started, you know, the conversation today with uh, Christian, is uh, very well uh, done, and uh, it comes in different tranches. However, there is much more, which is in uh, Sofia, which I um, is one of the reasons actually I intend to uh, continue my search um, and try to um, um, square sort of my findings uh, with uh, some tenets from Western-centric uh, intelligence theory. Uh, in order to understand better the national approaches of covert action of uh, totalitarian uh, intelligence systems and democratic uh, uh, systems. So what I would like today to talk about is the significance uh, of uh, this particular um, uh, very curious, in my opinion, attempt at uh, specialization, imitation, but also innovation on the state of the Bulgarian totalitarian um, 
uh, state security apparatus. Um, also um, revisit the archival profile through the lenses of the intelligence studies. And uh, this would mean sort of the application or accrued application of theoretically the so-called uh, acquisition cycles theory uh, within intelligence. Uh, to place uh, this particular department, uh, which I have affectionately called the Raiders of the Past, and I'll explain in a second as to why, uh, in the context of uh, political and social and historical um, context uh, of the late 70s and 80s uh, in socialist Bulgaria, talk a little bit about the uh, directorate's main mission, targets and activities, uh, and cite several case studies which might be familiar to some of you. If not, uh, then hopefully I'll spark your curiosity to uh, take a look at those. Those are the operations, so-called Citadel, which later on runs through uh, Operation Marathon and is one of the longest planned and executed operations within um, stored in Bulgarian intelligence files and uh, Operation The Island. And I'll explain later what uh, stands behind those code names and discuss uh, legacy and con controversies uh, in late socialist uh, history at the um, uh, in and around 89, specifically after 85, 89, and then uh, post-socialist developments in the transition, which are connected with some of the arguably some major scandals connected to some of those figures. Now, for those of you that are Bulgaria watchers, um, uh, you might know, but if not, you might be surprised to find out that some of the most visible public figures in Bulgarian politics actually have due tight connection, uh, unsurprisingly, to the Zhavna Sigurnos, but also to this particular uh, unit, uh, which um, has a very specific profile. And I would argue that this uh, profile actually has no analog amongst the so-called fraternal uh, intelligence services. And then on to preliminary conclusions and questions for further research. So why should we even bother with um, uh, with a case, you know, that supposedly is rest in peace, uh, although uh, I would argue uh, this is absolutely not so the case. Uh, and what can intel studies or political science gain from a uh, reread of trash of available archival units, uh, very well preserved and stored um, uh, in order to, to get a glimpse uh, of what we can um, sort of um, understand as dynamics uh, uh, of political uh, uh, and operative tasking. <clears throat> well, the first, uh, if you will, um, standard answer that you'll hear from intelligence uh, theorists and political scientists that are interested in covert action, uh, or intelligence historians for that matter, uh, would be that uh, if you uh, are unaware of one country's covert action activities, you're seeing simply half of the story uh, of uh, what uh, the um, executive or uh, the invisible hand of government is doing in pursuing uh, its state objectives. Um, so hence, uh, and beyond that, uh, I believe that um, in terms of structure, functionality, uh, and um, <clears throat> operational culture, um, we can learn a lot uh, from this particular period in order to explain uh, certain dynamic, political, social, and certainly intelligence and security related dynamics in post-socialist countries like Bulgaria. And this would be, of course, small states within the orbit uh, of the um, ever-present KGB, <clears throat> uh, which uh, also, uh, you, you know, just as general note, Bulgarian Darjavno Sigurnus after uh, uh, the um, 9th of September uh, is modeled tightly upon the model of the Soviet KGB, but all throughout its existence until very late stages of mature quote unquote socialism, the uh, Soviet advisors and uh, such as the ones I'll show you, General Savinkov, uh, are actually located in Sofia and tightly supervising um, uh, not only operative matters, but they are coordinating the so-called active and sharp measures, uh, some of the which, you know, we can talk about later, but not part of today's talk. So first of all, um, it is under research uh, chapter, the former intelligence services in the context of the Cold War. And I would argue that it's an attempted innovation because it has no analog within the structures of uh, other uh, Eastern European uh, totalitarian uh, former services. 
and also uh, represents a very interesting sample for recruitment among academics, clergy, uh, and uh, senior um, figures uh, within the intellectual life of, uh, of socialist Bulgaria that have occupied professional positions, a very prominent one before 89 and after the transition. And uh, immediately, of course, those examples uh, for, of, of, of people that were associated with this particular uh, department, uh, 14 department of the uh, PGU or for, for first main directorate, Parvoglavno uh, Provlenie, is the former head of state, uh, Georgi Parvano, from 2002 to 2012. Uh, head of Bulgarian state, uh, several very prominent, uh, now by now, some of them are not among the living metropolitans within the Orthodox Church. And of course, head of National Historical Museum, who was an MP, but also a minister within Garib's first government of Boyko Borisov, uh, who was responsible for uh, the Bulgarians abroad. Uh, also, it offers us uh, sort of the opportunity to scrutinize processes that I was talking about in the intelligence cycle in terms of planning, tasking, collection, analysis, and dissemination, and also uh, modus operandi in the framework of the totalitarian intelligence culture, or what I would argue cultures, uh, and national approaches to covert action. Uh, and of course, we can derive further lessons, I believe, in terms of innovation and deficiency in the course of the intelligence work and uh, as to why, as I'll uh, try to uh, wrap up in my conclusion, um, certain um, successes at operative level actually translate into strategic failures, uh, which cause uh, unwanted effects, or at least not the ones that were anticipated uh, by the political customers uh, at Politburo, uh, but also the other tasking bodies which were uh, tightly connected uh, to this particular unit and the Jano Sigurus in general. Okay, so. Uh, if we bear in mind the significance of the historical precedent and its potential to reveal those further details about these national approaches to covert action that I was talking about, um, I find uh, interesting to analyze the primary data in a form of uh, archival uh, and digitized disclosures, and part of them actually are not digitized, and the Committee for Disclosing the Documents and Announcing Affiliation of Bulgarian Citizens to the State Security and Intelligence Services of the Bulgarian National Army, and this is this monstrous uh, sort of um, abbreviation. Uh, but uh, I want you to think about this as the attempt of illustration of uh, Bulgaria in order to disclose and until today as Bulgaria is heading uh, this weekend for uh, yet another round of parliamentary elections. Uh, you will see that the commission is uh, continuously even now uh, uh, publicizing the dossiers of people within uh, different spheres of life, certainly people on high political positions, but also within academia and so on, uh, for their um, connection to the structures of Darjavno uh, Sigurnos, the former state security and intelligence apparatus, and the military intelligence, which is uh, known as RUMNO. Uh, also, uh, secondary data, appraisal of secondary data from uh, published academic works, which are actually very few, uh, and uh, it's a little bit surprising as uh, some of those initial trashes of documents were uh, pub uh, became public uh, as, as far back as 2014, and it's a story in itself how the esteemed journalist that I was talking about was able to recover one of the files. Uh, just for general knowledge, um, one of the latest or the last uh, leaders of the um, old intelligence guard uh, actually was sentenced, although I'm not sure whether he served the whole sentence uh, effectively, uh, for destroying uh, and manipulating certain amounts of files. Uh, uh, fortunately enough for us, we still do have um, enough uh, evidence uh, in order to draw certain conclusions. Uh, so that leads us automatically to look at uh, the biographies, which as you can imagine are not necessarily a very uh, good source of information. However, they provide a glimpse into this complex dynamic. Uh, after all, we're talking about cloak and dagger. And of course, personal interviews and journalist investigations and Christian, yes, you know, talking to archivists in order to understand 
what else uh, could be located where, because as Bulgarians would know, and I would use it, is the, uh, uh, the game of Kartonchita, into which, uh, uh, or uh, uh, so the rough translation of that would be um, the game of those slips uh, to which uh, the affiliates, official and non-official, to the structures recruited uh, into the different directorates of the totalitarian intelligence apparatus. Uh, there is a specific method of storing those and archiving them. Uh, and as you can imagine, in post-socialist Bulgaria, it becomes a huge um, uh, element of co controversy uh, due to the illustration, but also, of course, uh, I would argue, just as in the case of Bujidar Dimitrov, the late the Bujidar Dimitrov could become a source of pride, depending on how one uh, is thinking about um, uh, those processes. So in order to advance, you know, the research from the perspective of national approaches to covert action, uh, there are three uh, questions that I'm interested in when dealing with this particular matter. And first of all, is what do the classified documents pertaining to the work of this particular department reveal in terms of overall impact and utility, uh, but also not forgetting that this is a part of a much larger structure, uh, which um, uh, you know either acts in tandem uh, or sometimes, as you will see, uh, in, um, not necessarily with a very good coordination uh, with their colleagues uh, from uh, other departments of foreign, uh, civil foreign intelligence, but also counterintelligence as well. Uh, what were the major sources of trade craft, trade craft, uh, trade craft pardon me, weaknesses uh, as per the cycle that I was talking about? And what are the major sources of past and ongoing controversies? And my hypotheses uh, in order uh, when I'm approaching this, and of course, this is after, you know, I'm familiarized uh, more or less with, um, with the context uh, of, of, uh, of this uh, historical case and phenomenon is that the department overall utility and, impo uh, and, and impact in support of their major uh, statute task related to communist party state leadership's shifting priorities and the Bulgarian scientific community needs is actually rather limited. Um, regardless of the myth and the legend that uh, uh, is very well developed in certain quarters of Bulgarian uh, society, uh, 14 department uh, as far, you know, from my perspective, very far removed from the monument man or other instances that we know from um, other countries is intelligence uh, apparatuses that were tasked with recovery uh, an acquisition of uh, historical and cultural artifacts. Now, uh, another hypothesis I have is that in similar fashion uh, to other departments and units, it relies heavily on human, or that is human intelligence in terms of targeting and, acqu and acquisition. And uh, we can um, generalize a little bit that it, it exhibits the weaknesses in terms of adequate analytical in-house acquisition, which seems to be a major uh, flaw within uh, the socialist countries' uh, intelligence apparatus, uh, for the most part, regardless of the fact that they had different types per operation of um, specialization, just put it shortly: uh, good at acquiring, good at infiltrating, good at good at uh, penetrating uh, uh, designated targets, and not very good in analytics. Uh, and certainly, uh, within a with a very specific profile of 14 department and second, I'll remove the weight as to say what this department was tasked with. Um, uh, it, it exhibited those deficiencies and especially in terms of uh, uh, expert um, input, opinion and assessment. Uh, interestingly enough, within those do documents, you can see a frequent flaw, which today uh, in modern analytic tradecraft is known as mirror imaging and relying on heuristics uh, in terms of planning target of target infiltration. Uh, this is very well documented when uh, in multiple operations. Uh, in short, that means that the planners of the operation uh, were um, thinking in designing those ops according to their own understanding of uh, the situation, specifically in the West, and uh, also I would argue in the in the neighboring countries, which were major neighboring of socialist Bulgaria, major 
uh, targets uh, target countries, uh, especially after the end of the uh, end of the 70s. Another big decision or uh, the deficiency is the frequent overlap in object uh, acquisition meaning that uh, the planners uh, did not have a good information or tasking from the end customer uh, in order to um, avoid dual um, or repetitive tasks in acquiring things which actually were already present, sometimes paradoxically in the National Library of Sveti Kirilin Metodi. Um, most importantly, the departmental track record indicates major inefficiencies and weaknesses related to the overly ambitious and inadequate operative planning, but most importantly, fear of methods and sources compromise and exposure, which will become uh, part of the downfall of the department, among other reasons. Uh, and uh, please remember when I was talking about limited utility, I'll explain in a second uh, what typical operations would look like and why uh, this uh, deficiency in, in a structure of flaw uh, cripples the, the work or the overall efficiency of this department. So um, in, in my last hypothesis, the, 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 despite the innovative character of uh, this department, uh, bear in mind, as I said, it has no analog among other uh, services at the time. Uh, within the context of uh, totalitarian intelligence um, um, operations. Its legacy becomes highly controversial, mainly to the targeting and acquisition modus operandi uh, that is reflected in some of the hotly debated and noisiest operations uh, that they have um, 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 been able to run through. So a <clears throat> uh, little bit about the context. Um, first of all, 14 department is known as cultural and historical uh, intelligence, and this concept is uh, of the Bulgarian state security, uh, and uh, it is considered to be an innovation, uh, as the concept of cultural and historical uh, intelligence is actually floated among security and academics in the beginning of the 70s, mainly among um, historians uh, uh, in and out of the University of Sofia. Uh, but also it coincides uh, with uh, uh, interior ministries tenures from 68 to 71 and from 71 to 73 uh, as a possible instrument in identification, location, acquisition, and retrieval of most valuable cultural historic artifacts which are located abroad from uh, foreign libraries, scientific institutes, and also uh, very interestingly from private collections. So this unit known as the CH, uh, CHI, Cultural Historical Intelligence, uh, is established within the structure of the first main directorate as a product of this thinking in June of 72, in line with the adoption of decision 352 of the Secretariat of the Communist Party, uh, related to the location, guarding, and management of the national historical and cultural heritage abroad. Um, this is uh, also part of what we call the cultural awakening and cultural opening. And of course, um, 14 department is uh, actually a very late comer to state security structure as it um, basically um, supplements or becomes instrumental in the policies of the, of the communist party and the party's uh, idea to exploit propaganda realization in the field of culture and history in support or, you know, to have strong argumentation about uh, Bulgarian uh, thesis, uh, specifically when it comes to what, what is known from the documents, quote unquote, highly sensitive questions. Uh, and those highly sensitive questions, of course, you can think about late uh, 80s, but uh, before the late 80s, of course, one of them is the perennial Macedonian question and uh, the uh, identity of the people uh, leave uh, and you know questions of minority of people on the territory of uh, then Yugoslavia. Uh, and another one which would actually become the, the reason uh, for um, sort of falling out of favor specifically with uh, Zhivkov is the inability <clears throat> to produce um, um, the, the sought after uh, historical evidence to support the so-called revival process. Uh, most importantly, uh, the uh, existence and the activities of 14 department correlate with the eclipse of the dictator's daughter, Ludmila Zhivkova, uh, and her tenure as the first deputy chairperson, and then uh, later a chairperson of the Arts and Culture Committee, uh, which is known as KIC. 
uh, of course, uh, it's a whole new uh, sort of area of uh, exploration. But uh, just for a general knowledge, a lot of the, uh, uh, the major acquisitions that this department and successes in its own view uh, was able to execute were presented directly to her. Uh, and were reported immediately, uh, not only for appraisal, but for an input. So you can think about those as uh, a similar equal customer to, uh, to the taskings of Politburo. Uh, also very important to uh, underline the intellectual influence from uh, a major figure in the Bulgarian trachology and uh, later uh, um, historian and education minister from 79 to 86, who was a deputy to Zhivkova at ACC, uh, uh, Professor Alexander Fall, who is probably uh, one of the first, and uh, I think Christov in his book, uh, Operation Marathon, um, um, you know, highlights very nicely uh, this historical um, trace and evidence of uh, sort of Fall's also thinking about, uh, in this case, specifically the Zograph Monastery uh, and Mount Athos um, and the preservation of historical treasures, material and immaterial, uh, and um, has a very strong imprint uh, on not only uh, the, um, the operational tasking and uh, priorities of this department, but also in terms of recruiting and uh, showing uh, potential uh, people. Now, interestingly enough, you know, a Bulgarian uh, legislature currently forbids opening uh, dossiers uh, of deceased people and uh, Professor Fall has deceased. So there is no uh, evidence, at least that I know of, uh, that implicates him as a collaborator to, um, uh, 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 to Darjavna Sigurus. And also later on, I thought that it's rather interesting fact uh, that Fall himself actually never traveled, according to his wife, Professor Valeria Fall, uh, to Mount Athos. Uh, and yet uh, some sources indicate that he's one of the major inspirations. So tasking uh, for Operation Marathon. Uh, so tasking, um, in uh, the tasking of this department as stipulated uh, in the archives is actually uh, very clear and precise coming out from uh, those state decisions and uh, the, the directives uh, in the Ministry of Interior. And it is to acquire previously unknown important works of Bulgarian history, I'm citing here directly, art and culture kept in depositories abroad, and B, documents and artifacts shedding light and truth on controversial issues, uh, mind you here, distorted by false claims of foreign historians. Uh, and also to actively counter attempts, attempts at falsifying Bulgarian history and culture, and to collect uh, top secret information on uh, scientific, cultural, historical, and arch archival institutions, libraries for the sake of infiltration for CHI purposes. Uh, here are the, some of the key figures that I was talking about. On your left side is uh, the late Professor Fall. Uh, it is Ludmila Zhivkova. Uh, interestingly, I've selected some uh, pictures, you know, archival pictures in, of her flamboyant world touring uh, and the successes of uh, some of the um, exhibitions, again, connected uh, to uh, the work of 14 department, as you can see here with Jimmy Carter and the Pope. And of course, on your right side is the minister, Angel, Angel Solakov. Some people claim that he's one of the darkest figures uh, within uh, the um, long succession at uh, MOI, Bulgarian MOI, and connected to some of the repressive measures, which I'm not going to talk about today, about the ideological functions and so on. I just want to um, reiterate the 14 department is this innovative way of uh, Bulgarian state propaganda at that time to be uh, to receive a solid uh, quote unquote evidence. Now, in terms of no analogs, um, here is a document and this is how they look like. Um, and this is called Spravka. Uh, and uh, if you think that so far this attempted specialization and innovation has gone unnoticed by, by the big brother, then you're totally wrong because here what we see is uh, this admission that 14th uh, department actually has no analog. Uh, and this is why, uh, you know, um, some of the um, cooperation is non-existent and not very efficient with uh, fraternal, fraternal um, uh, services. 
but also uh, it suggests uh, that as the active measures, which are, uh, this is what you see here on the screen, uh, which are um, um, activated against the socialist countries and falsifying, you know, in order to increase the uh, degree of pressure on the Balkans, the true falsification of historical facts and truths, uh, they need to be also supervised by Savchenko, uh, who, uh, whom I, I don't think I've included the picture today, but later on I uh, can talk about uh, more. Uh, so definitely KGB was very well aware of, uh, of uh, what it is. And as Christoph and other researchers suggest, uh, actually some of the operations, especially the one directed at uh, the St. George's, um, uh, George's uh, Monastery at Mount Atos, the Bulgarian one, where Historia slovena bulgarska or the history, uh, Slavonic Bulgarian history is located, one of the key books for all Bulgarians connected to the cultural uh, awakening and um, uh, is, holds a very special place. Um, uh, are actually copied uh, from methods which KGB uh, ran against uh, or uh, were targeting the Russian monastery. Uh, as you know, Mount Athos is actually a Monashiska Republika, uh, or you do have monasteries of all uh, Orthodox nations, uh, which are self-managing. Um, so in terms of structure, it's interesting to see uh, what uh, their operational design uh, suggests. And of course, uh, you do have the head of the department, deputy head, I'm not gonna go into those particular uh, uh, figures, uh, but rather look at the operative lines. Uh, first operative line, which indicates highest priority is Turkey and Greece. Second operative line uh, is Italy and the Vatican, then Romania and Yugoslavia. And then only third operative line is Austria, France, Federal Republic of Germany or West Germany and the UK. And in addition, you do have combined operations uh, in the US, India, Spain, Egypt, and Cyprus. Uh, those are very interesting, especially the ones I found fascinating uh, in and around uh, Egypt and some of the Arab countries, because they usually are targeting um, as a bypass of targeting uh, 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 or targeted acquisitions of Ottoman documents pertaining to um, uh, Bulgarian past, which were very important at the time. Remember the context I was saying uh, almost at the end of the revival. And here is the operational geography. Now for a small country like Bulgaria, although um, uh, probably some of the operations I haven't, or the map is very small, it's pretty impressive uh, of sort of scope and reach of what they have been doing. Now, but by impressive, I'm just saying the reach, not the quality of the work. So if you think about that, if you start with 12 operatives uh, and you run all of those, uh, you start to ask, you know, what type of operations themselves actually and uh, what activities they will be um, uh, engaged in. Now, uh, what becomes, you know, um, uh, kind of uh, very obvious from uh, the official documents from, from the secondary research and so on, uh, the operative environment was the, definitely divided in two big parts. You know, one of them, which is called easy operative environment, and counterintuitively here, take a look, Western Europe and the U.S., uh, versus hard operative environment, which is Greece, Turkey, Yugoslavia, Romania, and the, the Vatican. And, uh, you know, you would think, okay, well, this is the Cold War. Why, why Western Europe? Why, why the U.S.? Uh, and the answer is very simple, uh, or rather counterintuitive. But uh, in the West and in the US, uh, some of the libraries and institutions have an open access. Remember when I was talking about the mirror imaging? <laughs> and uh, uh, as opposed to Greece, Turkey, Yugoslavia, uh, which uh, were hard operative environment, because at that time, certain institutions, uh, according to those documents, uh, had a hard restrictions on Bulgarian citizens. Uh, out of fear that they might um, actually carry out a number of activities. So um, what about covers, uh, operational covers? Now, this is a note from 73 uh, and actually is a concept for organization of uh, 14 department of PGU DC, uh, which was uh, uh, adopted. And it says uh, for the covers, or the most appropriate covers, 
uh, where uh, the agents have to work or the, the case officers have to work are uh, culture uh, or uh, section culture, uh, section um, press uh, of the Ministry of Foreign Affairs, uh, the Institute for uh, mm, keeping and managing the um, uh, national uh, uh, national uh, monuments of culture, uh, the, the committee for friendship and uh, cultural um, ties with uh, uh, abroad, certain specialized institute of the Bulgarian Academy of Scientists, such as uh, the Institute for uh, Balkanistica for Balkan Studies, Institute of History, Institute of Literature, Archaeological Institute, Bulgarian Historical Archive, uh, and the old type and oriental uh, part of the National Library, as well as Sofia Press. So those were the covers. And uh, of course, some of the operations that I'll, uh, I'll just highlight in, in the sake for as I'm running out of time, were ran actually by people uh, uh, with diplomatic cover, which caused a huge tension uh, with uh, the foreign ministry in order to avoid uh, scandals. So very quickly, activities and active measures. And on your left side, uh, obviously this is what we see from their tasking and operation uh, no design. So artifacts, uh, um, material and immaterial uh, artifacts, uh, uh, such as manuscripts, my, uh, maps, icons, paintings, uh, coins, uh, statues, and so on. Appraisal of acquisition, secure storage and deposition into the HQ or National uh, Institute uh, or Historical Museum. Uh, and of course, analysis and dissemination of those works. Remember, this is the elements of the cycle related in support to state policies. Uh, so uh, uh, also uh, on the right side would be, would, would be the tradecraft techniques which uh, they would uh, go through. So those are agent recruitment for target penetration and infiltration. And uh, what Christoph and others uh, are pointing out is that you see that at the end of the 70s, actually they kick into high gear uh, and uh, not only you know work through secret collaborators, but then uh, foreign citizen recruitment becomes a priority. Ops, ops logistics uh, and propaganda in support of state uh, objectives. You would say a propaganda how well uh, creating obstacles for critical historians uh, uh, in order to publish that might undermine the Bulgarian position and then encourage uh, French uh, or Western uh, or other you know, um, notable figures in the world of uh, um, Ottoman history, uh, of uh, uh, tracology and so on uh, to help them publish uh, where they use some of the documentation which is acquired. Uh, and of course, as you see, active measures in discrediting Yugoslavian, Romanian, and Greek and Turkish historic, uh, historians. Um, so very quickly, because I'm out of time, three examples. Uh, Operation Citadel. What is the mission? Uh, the mission is on your right side is the map of Mount Athos and the location of the Bulgarian monastery, St. George Zograf, uh, which uh, is one of the longest running operations, which will um, actually be connected tightly to the next one called Marathon. And it is to prevent the loss of the Bulgarian character, theft, falsification, destruction of artifacts and treasures of material uh, character, and photocopying and, you know, like the then digitalization microfilm of all available Slavonic archival materials, supposedly out of fear uh, that throughout the crisis with the so called crisis with the Romanian abbot ship uh, and depopulation uh, uh, within the monastery, fear out of uh, losing this historical stronghold of uh, Bulgarian identity uh, in on Mount Athos. Um, take a look at the length. Um, it began on 10th of January 71 and until 87 was the last person taking photographs within the archives. Now this is uh, mostly third and fourth floor of the monastery um, where 
Uh, there are two interpretations when I talk about uh, scandals and legacies. Um, uh, one interpretation, uh, which might be very plausible, uh, the atheistic uh, Communist Party was not so much interested uh, in uh, preserving uh, sort of the spiritual uh, richness of the Bulgarian monastery, more so was interested in the material possessions, uh, which were locked away on third and fourth floor uh, and wanted to retreat them back home. Uh, again, the status mixed results because uh, obviously uh, if you're, it takes so long, uh, obviously, first of all, there is a lot which is located at, uh, at uh, this part, but also it is in Greece. So it requires, um, you know, and it's a NATO front country at that time requires um, a lot of investment time and effort. Operation Marathon, probably the most well-known and scandalous and on your right side is the monastery proper. Uh, it is the acquisition and retrieval to Bulgaria, the original of the Chernovavs, uh, Historia sloveno bulgarska uh, Slavonic Bulgarian history, uh, written by Paisius of Hilandar. And the operation actually is the actual swap uh, uh, of the original for a copy previously prepared in Bulgaria. Now, the operation in itself is a story because it takes them three attempts to do so. Uh, and uh, at the end, curious fact, what Christov, uh, who, whom we actually owe, and I keep mentioning him because, but because of his uh, work, part of this documentation would have either been hidden and still unaccessible or destroyed. Uh, it is the admission of one of the officers that the copy was oversized, so they couldn't put, put it under the plexiglass box. Uh, length of the operation, which is uh, also uh, in continuation of uh, this previous uh, uh, operation, um, Citadel, Citadel, because you see how it looks, and also it's symbolic because it could not be penetrated easily. State as a success on December 18th, uh, 1985, the original by two officers is acquired and a copy is placed in the monastery. Uh, the original is retrieved to Bulgaria and smuggled out of the border uh, and brought into the HQ, subsequently to be demonstrated to all the way to the top to uh, people like um, uh, Todor Zhivkov uh, and certainly the top leadership of the Bulgarian state. Now, mind you here, because I'm playing devil's advocate, now I'm saying success, success, success. I want you to remember by, you know, from whom first of all, what acquisition means in this case and from whom they're acquiring it. If you remember, I was saying the Bulgarian monastery uh, in, on Mount Athos. So uh, next one, which is an exemplar is called the Operation Ostrovat or the island mission recovery of copies of important medieval sources pertaining to Bulgarian history from the Apostolic Library of the Secret Archives of the Vatican. Uh, in order to subsequently use those uh, highlighting the medieval importance of Bulgaria as an Orthodox spiritual center and a culture uh, center important for not only the West, but for the East. Uh, for instance, correspondence between Pope John VIII and Boris I, which were requested officially uh, by the Bulgarian state, but were not received. And hence was taking the decision from 72 to 77. This is tightly connected to Božidar Dimitrov, the future director of the National Historical Museum and his colleagues. Uh, you know, this operation, again, you know, in terms of uh, intelligence uh, structuring, very, uh, you know, mixed success in the sense that success because they were able to retrieve. And this is only part of what they were able to retrieve. Uh, but um, is put on hold until, you know, young promising scholars are able to get access and also to recruit uh, local uh, collaborators, uh, which can help them execute whatever they needed to do. Uh, okay, so here is uh, basically uh, the note from 72, uh, which uh, underscores uh, that uh, quote unquote, uh, I would like to stress one more time that the acquisition of the, co the copies of the letters between the Pope and Boris I uh, is exceptionally important for our historical uh, science. And this is, uh, as you see, top secret and declassified. So as early as 72. Okay, so in terms of controversies and legacies, uh, those are some of the figures that I was trying to 
uh, 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 talk about in the beginning. On your left side is Georgi Parvanov, uh, uh, well-known politician, uh, leader of the Socialist Party, and um, um, president of the Republic of Bulgaria. In the middle is the late uh, Bojidar Dimitrov. Here is one of the you know people that was uh, working in, in the Vatican. And on your right side is one of the um, uh, one of the clergy, uh, which was recruited. And here is another synergy, of course, about the um, inclusion of uh, uh, promising young clerics, uh, which uh, to have uh, to build their legend, to travel freely in the West, uh, and then uh, participate in some of the state uh, intelligence activities. Now, going back to uh, the most painful part, on your right side, you see uh, President uh, Parva, or, um, uh, sorry, <laughs> got to take a, a breath here. On your right side, you see the picture uh, from 1998, um, where President Petr Stoyanov, uh, who is a UDF pr uh, president, um, uh, returns the original Slavonic Bulgarian history copy to the custody of the monks. And actually here is the person, you know, who was tricked uh, while those two officers uh, smuggled it out at Mount Athos. Uh, and the sad story behind this supposed um, operational success is that when the book uh, is brought back uh, to Bulgaria and escaped in the safe of the national, uh, the director of the National Intelligence Service, uh, basically uh, illustrates the fallacy uh, that I've started with about the limited impact and utility uh, that the overall work, uh, regardless of the mythology that surrounds it, especially uh, among former communist intel officers and certainly figures on the left, uh, because uh, mm, frankly, to quote the top official, you know, when they have brought this uh, to his attention and they were lauded for their success, you know, he said, what do I do with this? Uh, that meaning to say that not that they didn't understand the value, the problem is that you don't want to compromise methods and, sense and sources and you cannot, uh, as it happened with numerous uh, acquisitions, not able to legitimize them for the public for the fear of question, how do you guys get them? Uh, and where do they appear from? Uh, hence the story, which I think uh, for those of you that are interested, take a look again at Christo's description and interviews with um, participants. Uh, uh, um, it's a sad, sad story of how, um, how the copy actually is, uh, reappears uh, in the, um, uh, at the hands of the very person, uh, the person that I was talking about in the Vatican, who at that point is the former director of the Historical Museum, uh, but also becomes a part of the political game of post-socialist Bulgaria, right? If you return it back, uh, you're a national trader, you know, you're giving away treasures. Uh, if you keep it, uh, you risk to have the political scandal uh, as to why and how it was acquired and to bear the shame. So it's a political trap. Okay, so very quickly at the end, controversies uh, in a broader picture. Um, so if these operations were deemed to be successful, then why the, 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 the controversies that surround them until today? Uh, and at least in past several years, and specifically now with the reappearance of the so-called Macedonian question, certainly there are people talking about uh, you know, the exploits of the uh, CHI. First of all, due to the method of acquisition, a uh, method of acquisition, of course, on one side, you can argue with an Intel theory that uh, especially Intel ops you know, abroad, they're all about breaking the laws of foreign countries. Uh, however, here there is the moral argument about the theft of the copy, at least of Maritime, uh, from something that historically has been associated with the Bulgarian state for centuries. Um, also, big scandals, which uh, uh, kind of like mark the demise uh, and falling out of favor of this particular department that happened in 81, uh, uncovered the material and resource corruption and uh, misallocation. Uh, simply put, because of the lack of uh, transparency of how they were disposed, how were they were acquired, uh, and so on, especially with the most valuable um, material artifacts uh, that they got their hands on, 
A um, lot of people were using, you know, the operational funds for other purposes. And uh, since 2004 reappeared, a lot of accusations voiced through Derek Radio, very popular radio station in Bulgaria, a series of accusations that actually Ludmila Zhivkov and specifically 14 department figures that I'm not going to go into detail, are heavily into the antique trafficking and black market operations during and after 89 uh, and are connected to what Bulgarians would know as Imanyarska Mafia or uh, people that are connected uh, with illegal um, gathering of artifacts and then selling them. Okay, so on the right side is the ethical question when we talk about intelligence. And I look at Taylor and I know that uh, Taylor would agree with me that there is an ethical component to it. Uh, first of all is the distance of time to think about whether it's a theft or it's a patriotic duty. Uh, and you will see different explanations, you know, coming from left and right, from conservative and socialists. Patriotic duty for people that serve the People's Republic of Bulgaria, and they claim, such as uh, the late Dimitrov, if they ask me again, I'll do it again. Uh, other people that came in their defense of their academic colleagues, which are saying it was the duty for us, you know, to support this type of um, policy. Another angle, you know, are those heroes, are those regime henchmen, uh, depending on how would you like to launder your biography after uh, 89, uh, short. Uh, treasure readers versus conservators of the past. Uh, 14 department, of course, uh, officers would love to paint themselves as protectors of the national uh, treasure. Uh, however, uh, there is one very alarming and particular fact, surprise, surprise, at the end of 89, uh, the, at least what is seen from the documents published by Comdos, uh, the um, uh, catalogs uh, with uh, the acquisitions are missing, acquisitions are missing, uh, and uh, where they are is a mystery until today. And last but not least, you know, science versus patriotic science uh, that is uh, in support of what, again, Bulgarians would call patriotarstvo. Uh, you know, promotion of false patriotic uh, claims, or at least uns unsubstantiated, in order to inflate political price. Okay, so uh, my preliminary conclusions are that the analysis of this first chunk of source material supports this hypothesis that CHI's utility and impact is rather limited. Uh, and this is mainly to the sphere of exposure of uh, methods and sources and uh, operational logistics. Think about Marathon, uh, think about uh, so the, 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 the return of the copy of Historia Slovena Bogoska, but also think about the revival process, which is a story in itself, uh, where actually the political leadership of Socialist Bulgaria is accusing these guys of not doing enough. Uh, you'll see multiple documents where uh, throughout the 70s, people are encouraged to go into Ottoman history because the state needs those specialists uh, in order for the appraisals of the acquisitions and tasking, of course, and targeting. Number two, uh, the source indicates overly ambitious planning. And as pointed out in the Zbornik, you have 150 planned operations for 78 alone. Uh, which means that uh, as you go through the documents, you see constant pushback on dates for mission completion. Hence, you end up with marathons of this world. Uh, very hard to keep up with this type of uh, tempo uh, in order to uh, uh, sort of please your final customer, let alone if your final customer is Ludmila Zhivkova, uh, which wants to know uh, all kinds of interesting things, which I hope with Dr. Neuberger will be a topic of a new Balkan uh, circle talk, uh, bordering on mysticism and so on. Also, um, uh, just to uh, per H3 and H4, uh, analysis uh, also suggests, and here I agree completely with Christo Christov, is that uh, there was a necessary push to rely on covert methods when unnecessary. And he provides in his book and outlines very clearly that uh, throughout the engagement, you know, as those monasteries, for instance, were located on Mount Athos in Greece, the Serbian state and Serbian position and the Yugoslavian position changes. They go from covert to overt. No need if you can do that, especially after 75 
uh, with the colonel's regime uh, and you know subsequent uh, political shifts. Yet one explanation is that um, a lot of the corruption and inefficiencies that I was talking about could be swept away under the rug if you classify it. Also, um, uh, as we've talked about, probably the most major sort of uh, source of controversies until today is the means of acquisition and what really happened to those uh, acquired documents. Okay, for the microfilms and so on, we can go and check them, but uh, there is a hotly debated uh, sort of still conversation about what some of those most valuable artifacts uh, are uh, and where they are located. However, for intelligence, uh, from intelligence perspective, you clearly see shortcomings, you know, if we apply again the idea of the cycle uh, as per a typical intel theory that some of our students here are well familiar with, uh, because um, with all of those deficiencies at all uh, steps of the cycle, uh, you can't expect great results. However, uh, this is also to open one big caveat is that they had their fair share of successes, such as recovery of certain painters, such as Vladimir Dimitrov Maestro uh, and other um, valuable um, manuscripts, maps, uh, and so on. Uh, so overall, you know, very, very, very controversial and mixed uh, record. Uh, the road ahead. Um, now, I believe that uh, because since I was not able to travel because of COVID, but because of other limitation as well in terms of digitalization and access to some of the archives. And here, Christiane, I was glad to hear that some of the archives are very well preserved. Uh, so looking forward to be back in Sofia. Uh, Definitely, uh, in order to continue my analysis, which is not the historian, not the already road taken, which is very valuable by Christov and others, uh, is to understand the context of the national approaches of, uh, of covert action, because that means that they are connected to the organizational DNA uh, of the totalitarian state, but also in post-totalitarian um, uh, organizational design, understanding, maybe, maybe not, uh, to think about legacy and continuity. I think that a lot of details will be also uh, in the two other uh, sort of big um, chunks that need to go and be revised or, you know, thought through. And this is the revival process, uh, process and the Macedonian question. Um, also, uh, I believe that another tranche, which might not be directly related to 14 department, but in, inadvertently uh, uh, would be connected to tasking objectives, prioritization, is those big uh, party state objectives and what I call pivot initiatives, such as uh, the celebration of 1,300 years of uh, Bulgarian state uh, in, was it, 1881? Uh, were also kind of like the priorities among uh, uh, this uh, close relationship with Ludmila Zhivkova. Hence, it makes sense to take a look uh, their activities there. Now, of course, um, uh, other operations are also very important because this is only part, again, is what I was talking about. Major interest, remember hard operational environments that I was talking about, is the interest in the Vakov uh, archives in Ankara and the University of Edirne, uh, as well as uh, the one that I'm very much waiting for. Uh, it's promised to, it, it had to be digitalized and published around last year. I assume that it has to do something with Condos's delay over, uh, over COVID. And this is a uh, new, new declassified tranche of documents detailing state security, the general signals approach to active and sharp measures but looking most likely beyond the well-known cases of uh, Georgi Markov uh, and other uh, attempts, because uh, you should know that Markov was a subsequent, the trial was run in France against another Bulgarian Im immigrant. And of course, to allow me to um, have interviews uh, with former intelligence services personnel, archivists, and uh, people that are interested in this topic. I do totally understand, uh, Dr. Neuberger, that I'm way over time. Uh, so I will stop here. And I hope it was um, interesting. Um, if not, <laughs> <laughs> it's okay to be over time when it's that interesting, Kirill. <laughs> Thank you for your interest. <laughs> I mean, this is a riveting story. Uh, 
you know, that particular manuscript, I mean, it was one I wasn't familiar with. That particular manuscript obviously is really important in the Bulgarian revival kind of imagination and kind of for that whole process, kicking off the kind of search for a kind of Bulgarianness, particularly within the Orthodox Church and against kind of Greekness. So it's really interesting that it was at the center of this. But so um, let me just start because I'm talking anyway. Uh, <laughs> and so what I want to say, like, one, I love how much history matters, you know, in this kind of conversation in a really layered way. And what I mean by that is both kind of the interpretation of the history of the this of the communist period and what these particular people were doing, you know, within this these kind of operations, and then the earlier histories that they were at that very moment, um, kind of interpreting, reinterpreting, trying to recover, um, and and really politicizing, kind of been weaponizing then. And so it's, it's interesting to me how it's come into politics and policy now in this really layered yeah. way. <laughs> so, uh, and obviously like around Macedonia. So, uh, okay, a couple of questions. Like one, I would really be interested to see what all of those other operations, um, I mean, I love the fact that they were able to smuggle in a fake copy of that manuscript, which would have been probably incredible to create anyway, without having, you know, and then sneak out the other. That I love that. But um, but I'm wondering, like, what are the other things they were trying to get? Um, and where was the kind of what were the parameters of Bulgarian history? So what about Thracian artifacts or things that were being a sort of pre-Slavic? What about remains? Like, were they trying to get Gosa Delchev's remains, for example? from Macedonia like what were all the things they were trying to get and then my second part of that question is I mean do you think history like particularly given the current situation between Bulgaria and Macedonia and the protocol and the, you know, the ultimatum and the protocol like does history how do we explain this to our students or people trying to understand the Balkans like does history matter more there than it does to us I mean you know what I'm saying like is that I and I'm not trying to like, you know, sort of orientalize the Balkans in any way or balkanize the Balkans in any way, but I just, you know, it, it really, this is a really intense kind of, you know, layered kind of discussion of the importance of history. So it seems to me that's a question that we could at least entertain. Well, thank you. You just gave me three really hard ones, you know, uh, and I'll try to, you know, like reverse them. Uh, you know, does history matter more on the Balkans uh, than anywhere else? Yes and no. Um, yes, because, I mean, if you look, as you've said, you know, just look at from Prespa Agreement, and then I'm just looking at the wonderful faces of previous presenters, such as Nuri and so on. This is the battle for uh, identity, or rather, the control of you know formation of identity. Uh, and some people in certain strata of the society, you know, takes it to heart uh, and look no further. You know, and I'm far away from explanations about ancient hatreds and so on, which are uh, unsupported. Uh, but if I look at the history of the Yugo Wars, it's kind of like you can draw scary conclusions there. And no. Uh, I don't think Balkans are uh, orientalized, as you said, you know, in this manner. Uh, I think uh, they exhibit um, sort of normal historical processes, social processes, just like everywhere, everywhere, everywhere else. But they do have uh, their own specific and flavor because of this rich history uh, overlaps and everything else that we have heard uh, in the course of uh, this semester of forming identities, of fluidities, of fluid boundaries, of belonging. So it, 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 in, in this context, we have to reason through number two uh, about politics. Mary, uh, I don't think there is a day that goes by, you know, like in the conversations on the Balkans where history is not referenced or anchored or abused in one way or another by the political class. Uh, and uh, I'm not trying to put this into a, some sort of a dark uh, sort of 
Glennian perspective on, on, you know, the bloody history of the borderlands or something like this. Uh, but, uh, you know, examples anywhere from Milosevic's speech to much more milder attempts to bend and shape historical facts in order to support your historical truthful claims, your relation to the region, you know, in uh, this what I call forward to the past, you know, uh, competition for antiquity, uh, where uh, you find desperately seek a connection, which sometimes, and I hope, you know, I'm going to have a chance one more time to talk about some of the strangest iterations of how those things uh, have manifested in a search of you know, artifacts or remains or so on. This is not to discredit uh, trachology whatsoever, uh, au contraire. I think that, you know, they have incredible uh, sort of insights into, into those cultures and uh, so on. It is just uh, when you elevate something to a state policy and you were asking me the hardest one as to what types and how many operations uh, that uh, they were executing well for their relatively short existence in comparison to other departments. They have ran a lot, uh, anywhere from acquiring paintings, you know, from the US, you know, from uh, private collections to uh, chasing maps, uh, manuscripts, uh, microfilming uh, archives, uh, through uh, access to um, um, Arabic and Asian based libraries with less restrictive access uh, to you name it uh, in order to um, remember when I said that this pivot point, you know, like to cater to 1300 years of the establishment of the Bulgarian state to support initiatives of Zhivkova, uh, uh, to uh, add veracity to the Communist Party's leadership stance on Macedonian question, on the renaming, uh, some, some really shameful, you know, sort of parts of, 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 of you know, modern history uh, in order to uh, sort of find justification. And at the end, by the way, uh, uh, as I talked before that, Mary, you know, like their demise, you know, and they're kind of like falling out of favor with uh, with the top came precisely, you know, because, you know, supposedly they, you know, expected more from them specifically on the revival process. And uh, so if what I mean is like, think about the specter, you know, like, uh, and uh, this is tied pretty much about what I was talking about the intelligence cycle in terms of tasking and expertise. I mean, what kind of ex in-house expertise you need to have you know, not only, you know, you know, Dimitrov and his guys, you know, medievalists, uh, then you have to have trachologists, then you have to have uh, and, 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 in order to keep it tight. Uh, now, this is constantly in the fear of exposure and major diplomatic scandals, because obviously, you know, some of the ops will be connected to operatives, uh, you know, doing things that they shouldn't be doing, you know, supposedly. Um, so, very complex uh, uh, topic. Um, they were um, connected with multiple uh, sort of uh, operations, but the ones that I find most uh, fascinating, uh, Mary, is actually how historians, scientists, become the object of operations themselves, be it uh, secretly as one of the operations photocopying of Western, I believe, was he American, you know, visiting Sophia uh, in order to gain access to his, uh, you know, his. Um, carry on luggage, you know, some documentation uh, or discrediting specific uh, researchers uh, and then facilitating the work of others. That in itself, I think, is a book right there. <laughs> so, right. Or there's Marcia McDermott, who uh -huh. one wonders if she, you know, was implicated. And yeah. <laughs> um, so wait, Nuri, you had your hand up but then I think you put it back down. Do you have a question? Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Thank, okay. uh, thank you so much. You've seen it. Um, so, uh, Kirill, thank you very much for this uh, really nice presentation because I have already like three questions. First one, <laughs> just to be brief, the first one, wasn't there a mean like, you know, first to uh, request such materials or artifacts, let's say, uh, through diplomatic means, at least officially, or they thought that if they request such material, it could rise more doubt to hide them in a very Nuri. particular way. Uh, I think you yeah. just nailed it. I don't want to say just I'll, I'll answer them brief like ping pong. You just nailed it uh, uh, you know, on the head. I think 
Uh, first of all, remember when I said mirror imaging and so on, you know, in certain cases, the documents suggest, you know, from what I see, is that supposedly, with, as in the case with the Vatican, you know, the official request was not honored. But uh, the other operations suggest that there was absolutely no necessity, you know, to go in covert, if you have an overt official channel to obtain this, no need to send people to play spies, you know, uh, and do uh, things which would aggravate the situation, as was in Mount, uh, uh, in Zugravsky Monastery, where, yeah. where they were causing scandal after scandal after scandal. And, uh, you know, the, um, by scandal, I mean, poisoning the atmosphere amongst the people themselves, because this is a very small community of monks uh, where, uh, you know, very elderly people. Uh, so, yeah. Uh, I think this needs to be a movie, like Maria said, or, or maybe, well, a, mini a, good maybe a mini series. I'm maybe watching I, the Bureau right now about the French intelligence operations. Made I hope that she needs it in a, well, uh, in a good way, but uh, I, I really think that this is understudied phenomenon. You yes, know, I'm in, amazed. Which, which has like a colorful part, but make no mistake, you know, uh, yeah. there is nothing in this talk to glorify or oh, no. agree with uh, some of the things that are done because I myself, you know, have... Um, very peculiar feelings when when I look at some of the some of the available documentation and operations ran. You know, don't forget that mm -hmm. Darjano Sigunus has ruined the lives of many people. This is not, you know, I mean, oh, yeah. first and foremost, it's a repressive apparatus for control, in, internal control, and then in support of certain uh, objectives. Sorry, Nuri, I wanted to cut you off, but you know, I thought no, this, no, no, this, this is a really good point, uh, point to answer because, like all my Greek friends, uh, whenever I visit Thessaloniki or uh, Athens, uh, keep telling me that you know the two greatest things Bulgaria had during the Cold War period was the uh, good uh, hospital service and uh, really uh, good, um, well-educated doctors, medical doctors. And also the secret service. <laughs> so for them, for them was like a very efficient secret service. The second question is like you gave uh, examples of uh, several successful uh, operations they did uh, from, uh, let's say, Greece. But uh, what about uh, their operations, which you said quite difficult, uh, hard operational basis, let's say, in terms uh, if there is any operation done in Turkey? at that period or if they have an example. And the last question briefly, I mean, it's not directly related with it, but still related with the Vatican, because you know, the assassination attempt of Aja, uh, of uh, Papa uh, Second uh, John Paul, John Paul. and um, what happened and uh, how uh, all uh, the attention was turned towards the Bulgarian secret service at that time. If you managed to see any document about it, because I'm curious to learn more uh, for about this question. I mean, of course, if you have seen only something about it, thank yeah, you. Well, I've seen, uh, you know, I'll start from the backwards. I'd like to separate them because, I mean, obviously, you know, there was, uh, you know, if you look at secondary explanation, not primary, you know, uh, ab about, uh, you know, Aja and, uh, you know, the attempt on the Pope's life, there was a huge, huge uh, sort of, uh, you know, problem for reputational problem for Bulgaria, whether they've been part of or not, because you had people like Claire Sterling, you had um, other people that I've written, you know, which are weaving in, you know, like all those uh, different themes, Nuri, that you, that you would know, such as Kintex and drug trafficking and smuggling uh, specialty of, you know, um, and uh, arms or support and arm shipments to revolutionary movements, another specialty, you know, of the Bulgarian um, uh, special operators, um, uh, and so on. Um, so in short, I haven't seen anything like that. I've seen a lot of uh, other explanations, however, uh, that are trying to tie it all together. Most definitely not with the group, however, of Bujidar Dimitrov and other historians, you know, which were, you know, researchers purely. I haven't seen anything, you know, connecting them to this other you know, uh, famous case, you know, involving Bulgarian secret service. Now, Nuri, uh, remember I said, you know, um, there were operations in Turkey and uh, uh, Turkey was deemed to be probably the hardest or one of the hardest operational uh, targets for a reason. And there was a very specific elevated request for Usmanists, for uh, uh, historians, uh, you know, with knowledge of uh, Ottoman Turkey's history, because 
as you can imagine, uh, by looking at uh, some of the acquisitions they've done either through in Turkey itself or through the uh, Arab countries, mainly uh, in the Arab world and Egypt, uh, where they were able to purchase uh, either copies or sometimes originals, uh, mainly of uh, Vakovsky, Moti, mainly mm. of uh, Kadaster. Um, oh, help me out, please. I think it is Kadaster's. Yeah. Kadaster, uh-huh. Mm -hmm. uh, and other documents pertaining to, you know, like on multiple topics, uh, which were documenting lives of uh, Bulgarians uh, during Ottoman times. Uh, but um, I, this is exactly the batch I want to go through specifically, you know, uh, more because I think uh, that and the Macedonian or the Yugo batch will give us reference points because uh, when I say success, you know, uh, you, you, I, hopefully you understood the nuance what I'm saying, operational success in their own understanding. Now, whether this is a success, you know, look at the after story, you know, of how you can use this or actually not use it, you know, because basically, frankly, if something sits locked in your um, safe for, you know, like so many years, you know, then the whole pretense about using, you know, as a supportive propaganda or info op goes up in the air, you know, of course, you know, this is not an ideal world. Uh, so, uh, Nuri, I'm, this is why I'm, you know, like, answering in short and very conservatively, but this is the batches I want to look at. I'm sure more will come there, uh, especially as Bulgarian intelligence is kind of like main lines of work and specializations always have been, you know, the Middle East, uh, Greece, Turkey, uh, and uh, Caucasus, you know, former republics. So uh, it would make sense actually to where instinctively you were saying to to look at and not only but i'm pretty sure you know if if it's preserved it should be there all right we okay. have a couple more questions we should try and get to um keith you had a question yeah uh thank you so much um dr avrama for this presentation um i wanted to ask about something that you had to pass over kind of quickly for the sake of time um you said that there were active measures in discrediting Greek, um, another nationality, and Romanian historians. Um, uh, and also uh, what you um, pointed out in that document about Balkanistica, like Balkan studies um, is, yeah. So I'm just wondering if there was, if this was about the historians specifically, like sort of character assassination, or if this is discrediting the ideas and if there was like an effort to revise the more pan-Balkan histories, or just was it the representation of Bulgaria in each of these places? Um, if you could speak more to uh, how that discrediting happened. Yeah. My, my uh, well, I don't have too many documents, you know, like, uh, you know, containing, you know, like immediate examples of discrediting, but the idea was, to my understanding, by looking at the operational plans, is uh, to discredit specific figures who represent uh, certain type of ideas, especially when it comes to the territorial integrity of the Bulgarian state. So it makes sense, you know, if you have Romanian historians talking about Dobroja, you know, to be, you know, the ones that are the target, the ones that claim that there is Macedonian minority, for instance, would be another ones. Uh, so, and then of course, you know, fortify favorable, um, uh, publications, uh, ideally from well-known and renowned in their understanding back then, uh, authors, you know, which uh, would uh, elevate the role of Bulgaria and the Balkans. And as you've seen, you know, with the efforts, at least with the, with the Vatican, right, you know, just to fortify the kind of the, the, the stand of uh, the Communist Party. Now, interestingly enough, Keith, uh, you're pointing out to something which I myself been thinking for a while. Um, and uh, if we step back and dispassionately remove the politics for a second and just look theoretically again from my perspective in you know, organizational and um, security studies and intelligence uh, and you know political science, but in a subset of security, um, it must have been very you know and I'm not that's not to um, again not to glorify or, or exonerate them or anything like this. But if you do have shifting priorities, you know, uh, in a very short space of time, right, you know, which are telling you, uh, oh, you have to look at this, 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 and this, you know, uh, simultaneously, uh, and support XYZ, you know, uh, objectives. And those change as it happened, uh, you know, uh, at the late Zhivkova and uh, specifically uh, throughout the 80s, where all of a sudden all these ideas are abandoned, and then you're there refocusing. 
you know, uh, it would, you know, it would take, um, you know, some sort of a specific structure, you know, that can accommodate um, those shifting priorities. But, uh, you know, you can, I can imagine what kind of, you know, I'm just speculating right now, Keith, but, you know, I can imagine what speculation or what discreditation would mean. It means that it will be on one side, a character assassination in the sense that about your credibility, about your sources, uh, about your access, you know, to certain things versus, you know, privilege access to others, you know, that was the idea, right, you know, that will give you, you know, those things that you will work with, and then, you know, co-publish with uh, local authors or, you know, you name it, uh, versus unpopular positions, you know, unpopular from standpoint of communist Sofia, uh, but mainly, as I said, you know, uh, aimed at uh, territorial integrity uh, of the People's Republic of Bulgaria, if that answers. Okay, I think we have time for one last question um, from the front lines of the Bulgarian archives directly coming to us from Sofia. <laughs> Christian, do you want to ask your question? Uh, I first want to thank uh, to, to thank you to Dr. Abramos for the very interesting talk. So uh, I have, I worked uh, in the uh, foreign archives department and the Bulgarian state, state archives where all of this uh, uh, copy of the records, microfilms, Microfilm. bring to Bulgaria during communist period are oh, so <laughs> you see the results. So when you come back here in Sofia, you should go there to see. Okay, the fruits <laughs> of the 14 departments work. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, 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 I have only one question. Uh, what is your personal opinion about Ludmila Jivko? Because for me, she was crazy. But uh, some of uh, her initiative, initiatives uh, were, after all, for me, useful for the Bulgarian science. And, for, and because of her, uh, these records now, uh, this copy of records are now available to the Bulgarian scholars. So what is your uh, personal? Christian, thank you, because you, you bring up something really big one that actually, I, can, I, um, can I spoil the... Uh, the surprise, uh, Dr. Newberger, is something that me and Dr. Newberger are looking for sure. <laughs> roughly about a, a year, and it's tightly connected to the legacy of Ludmila Zhivkova. Now, um, do I understand or comprehend, you know, the logic of her interest in, uh, and before I was preparing for today's talk, I was going through pictures of her with uh, Riorich on Znamena Mira, uh, you know, the banner of peace, uh, and things like this and, uh, you know, like kind of memories, you know, from my own childhood of going on the Kambanite on the bells, you know, like doing this. Uh, do I understand uh, the massive expenses, you know, uh, spent uh, in places like India? Don't ask me. I think that this is kind of iffy. Uh, however, there is one big uh, caveat I have to make. Uh, I believe that uh, Zhivkova, as controversial, as problematic as she was, represented what uh, I alluded to as the cultural uh, opening and experimentation. I believe someone on the circle before me spoke about this attempt for modernization, another... Theodora Dragosinova. Yes, well, I was thinking whether she's American or Bulgarian, but at least certainly, you know, of Bulgarian origin and American. Uh, and um, I tend to agree with, with this type of assessment that actually it was an attempt of Bulgaria for a, a little bit of emancipation, although uh, even within the input of uh, 14 departments, you know, like approach, you can see at least Christoph's claims and uh, part of it's very well supported by documents that probably uh, sort of dealing with, uh, with Zograf and Zografsky most there was very similar to what they've done with the Russian, you know, so the Soviet state with the Russian monastery uh, before. Uh, and that is, you know, acquire everything that is important and valuable and take it back to Moscow, then we'll talk. Uh, but um, with, with some of the initiatives, it certainly gave opportunity to Bulgarian scholars uh, to gain access as, as you are a living witness, right, of those microfilms, which are there. Uh, gave opportunity to uh, certain people to have uh, to be in contact, you know, with with the outer world, uh, and not be, you know, confined within the 
socialist and the Soviet orbit only, you know, which would allow, which I believe, you know, was deemed at certain point a bit dangerous. There is a reason why Savchenko wanted to supervise, as you've seen, one of the documents that I was showing, right, you know, like, or the facsimile of it, was saying that he needs to take a closer look at 14 department, because not all of the things, you know, that might have popped out from there, especially, you know, within the, regardless of the cliche about the 16th Republic of the USSR, might have been uh, well accepted in places like Moscow. And don't forget that part of her initiatives, you know, especially with uh, the exhibitions, they were a success, you know, like in the Western world, you know, I mean, you know, thinking about the foundation and so on. However, you know, very controversial, you know, this is where I'll, I'll, I'll stop. Thank you. All right, well, I have that concludes our Balkan circle for today.